And just like that, we are one step closer to a full production ready release of Unity's Entity Component System because just the other day we received a brand new update of the pre-release 1.0, which came with some nice quality of life features, which we're gonna be talking about today. Also, I wanted to talk to you about some cool things happening that I think you'll all be very interested in, in, including some awesome things happening at GDC, a VR hackathon coming up with some prize money associated with it. And we even just got a little bit of a hint of when we may actually be seeing that full production ready version of ECS. Anyways, let's get into it in today's video. So starting things out with the VR hackathon, this is gonna be a cool event because I'm actually going to be a judge in it. It's gonna be put on by my friends over at Dimension X. They basically have their whole metaverse creators community and they wanna do more of these community events like hackathons and meetups and things of that nature. So they're gonna be putting on a VR themed hackathon um, and they very graciously invite me to be a judge in it. Now the event actually kind of soft launches this week. Basically there's kind of a learning period that starts this Friday the 24th starting at 9 a.m. Pacific time. There's going to be a little bit of a kickoff and just kind of us going over some of the sample projects that we're going to be providing and then we basically give you all a week to just kind of do some learning and exploration and do some cool and interesting things with VR. So it can be very good for you if you haven't if you don't have any VR experience at all it can be a great excuse for you to kind of jump in and play around with some things. Then after that, on the following Friday, which I believe is March the 3rd, we're gonna do kick off the event in proper. And then the event is going to go on for another week. So basically you or your, you and a team of people can create a VR experience and then submit it by the following Friday, which would be March the 10th. And then myself and the other judges are going to be reviewing the submissions and we're going to be announcing the winners the following day, March 11th. And you will be competing for up to $4,000 in total prize money. So not only may this be a good excuse for you to play around with some VR stuff, but maybe you can get some prize money out of it as well. So of course I'll include some links in the description below for you to get a little bit more information about the events. And if you want, you can register and join the Discord community as well. Now I did mention that my friends over at Dimension X are putting on this event. If you wanna learn a little bit more about them and what they're building, of course, so you can check out the video that I did where I talked about my experience at CES where I was showcasing some things with them but also they will be at GDC. They have a booth right behind the Unity booth. So if you are gonna be at GDC, definitely feel free to stop by the Dimension X booth and tell them Turbo sent you. But I definitely know they have some really cool things that they're gonna be showcasing. So that is definitely a booth that you will not want to miss. Um, by the way, if you are gonna be at GDC, I will be there as well. I think myself and a couple other creators are gonna be planning some type of meetup sometime during the week. So I'll definitely be announcing some things later on if we have a little bit more concrete details on what all is going on with that. And so speaking of GDC, is definitely going to be a great event this year. I know Unity is gonna be doing some really cool things at the event. So not only are they gonna have a booth on the show floor, but they are going to be doing a number of talks and presentations throughout the duration of the event. Now, because these are technically sponsored sessions by Unity, I don't think you need to have anything other than just the regular Expo Pass to attend any of these talks. So, you know, if you are gonna be at GDC and you find any of these talks to be of interest, I definitely recommend checking them out. They're always a good time. And so actually on Tuesday, they're basically gonna be doing a full day full of talks talks. Um, kicking things off in the morning with just kind of a regular roadmap top. A couple of the bullet points that they've brought up in the description are going to be things related to dots and entities and ECS. So I suspect that we're gonna be getting a little bit more information about kind of the current state of things and where they're going to be moving towards, um, you know, over the next year or so. And after that, there's going to be a net code and multiplayer talk where they're gonna be talking about not only net code for game objects, but net code for entities as well. So I'll definitely be sticking around for that one. Then after that, there's going to be a dedicated talk on dots, which is called Wow Your Players with Ambitious Games. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. If you actually read the description for the talk, it says, ECS for Unity 2022 will be fully released alongside Unity 2022 LTS in just a few weeks. Learn from our panel of creators who have already leveraged ECS to great success in their games and hear about the future of Unity's data-oriented technology stack, DOTS. So not only does this sound like a really cool talk where not only we may get introduced to a couple new projects, that have been using dots that we may or may not know about. But this description also gives us a little bit more information about you know when we actually may see that production ready version of dots. And it sounds like it's just gonna be right around the corner. Now I'm not gonna take this description as like a 100% official announcement of anything. Um, don't wanna read into it too much. But based off of this, I think it's pretty safe to assume that it sounds like everything's still on track for uh, them releasing alongside the Unity 2022 LTS version when that is actually ready. Again, it's pretty likely that we will get a little bit more information about kind of the more concrete timeline of things 
during some of these other GDC talks. And with that, let's go ahead and take a gander over to the old computer where we can talk a little bit about some of the changes that were just made in the release of Unity's Entity Component System version 1.0.0-44. Let's get into it. Okay, so we'll kick things off over on the Unity forums where we have this post over by Isaac. By the way, Isaac is going to be the one putting on the DOS talk during GDC, so be on the lookout for that. Shout out, Isaac. Anyways, uh, we do have a couple things that he mentions here. Um, before getting into all the changes, he does uh, mention some samples and some documentation that are available to us um, that I don't think I've really talked about on the channel all too much. Um, so the Mega City demo, of course, the classic Mega City demo has now been updated for 1.0, and we can basically, you know, put it on our PC and learn from it. Have yet to play around with this version of the Mega City, but I definitely want to get into it. Super interested in trying to figure out, you know, how I want to do this for the channel. Maybe if I want to do a, a live stream or some videos on it or some kind of combination of both. Uh, but let me know if you have any ideas of some things that you'd like to see with Mega City. Also, another awesome sample project is the ECS Network Race. Um, so this is basically a game that was built using the netcode for entities and as you can tell it's a racing game and it kind of has like a Mad Max type style to it. We get these all souped up post-apocalyptic type looking cars here. Um, again, you know, kind of do want to dive into this sample project a little bit more, figure out what's going on with it. And there have been some updates to the dots guide, the ECS samples, and the learn content. Definitely go check those out if you haven't done so already. And then he breaks down kind of some of the notable highlights, which we are going to get into here. By the way, you can kind of link off all, to all these to see the full change log for each of these particular sections. So here's, say, the one on entities graphics. And you can see, well, here's the main entities one. You can see there's a decent number of things changed, but it's not, you know, Know, as big as uh, some other ones that we've had in the past. Um, but you can see that there have been a lot of things fixed here, which is very good. A couple of things been removed and deprecated and a decent number of additions and changes. Now, admittedly, a lot of the things in the change log here are, you know, things that are kind of nice to have, like better error reporting that gives you, you know, more clear errors when certain things are breaking or just kind of resolving issues that have kind of been happening on the back end. So there aren't any like crazy new features per se, but there are definitely some nice additions so for example if we pull up a code editor here you can see a little bit of a difference between you know how we used to have to set up i systems um, basically when we wanted to you know create an i system we would do a public partial struct which we call whatever and we implement the i system interface now when we implement this i system interface it forces us to implement the on create on destroy and on update methods now, if we did want to say burst compile the contents of each of these methods, not only would we have to put this burst compile attribute above it, but we would also need to put the burst compile attribute above the system to basically mark the system as saying, you know, hey, there are things in here that need to be burst compiled. Whereas the attribute basically above the individual method says, you know, actually burst compile the things inside this method here. Now, here's how things look like after the update. As you can see, there's a whole lot less going on here. You can see it's just much more simple. We still just define the public partial struct new system which implements i system now basically unity has created the default interface implementations of the on create on update and on destroy so if you want a system that doesn't require use of all three of those you don't have to actually have them so if you have a system that you say just want to run on create you can go ahead and have the on create right here and you don't need to have any of the other methods now if you do want to burst compile this you can go ahead and add the burst compile attribute and this will go ahead and mark this for burst compilation we actually no longer need to put the burst compile attribute above the i system in this version of ecs now while we're here i do want to show off another cool thing which is something that isn't actually brand new to the new version of ecs um, but it's something that i actually just found out kind of recently there actually is another interface that we can implement which is the i system start stop now this one it still forces you to go ahead and implement the member methods here which are the on start running and on stop running so this is a super nice one to have for a couple of reasons so if you're used to kind of the previous syntax of the system base you'll remember that there was an on create also an on start running on start on stop running and along with the on disable and on update so basically the advantage of having an on start running is this is called essentially before the first update call but it's called after on create a lot of times you'll see in your code maybe inside your on create if you want to do a 
uh, system API dot get singleton for say our cool singleton here. Um, that's actually not going to work because most likely the cool singleton entity is not going to be created before this on create method runs here. So one thing that we can actually do is we can go ahead and move this over to our on start running. And then another thing we can do is up on our system here, we can just go ahead and do a require matching queries for update attribute. And that basically means that the update method is, is only going to run if any of our entity queries are actually valid. And in this case, this is basically going to actually generate an entity query behind the scenes. So this say it means that basically if we have a singleton and it doesn't exist, this is not going to throw any errors because if this query doesn't exist, it's not actually going to run this code. But as soon as this singleton is actually instantiated, then it's gonna go ahead and run that code and get that singleton. So the on start running, this is kind of like similar to like an on enable and from the mono behavior world, because basically, you know, if the system gets disabled because you know, these, these queries are no longer matching and then it gets re-enabled later on, this on start running is going to run again, but the on create is only ever going to run once when it's initially created at the beginning of the application. So hope I'm making sense there, but it basically just gives us a little bit more flexibility with the things that we can do. But other than that, there's nothing really too majorly crazy between this and the previous update. So it does seem like we're getting really, really close to that full certified production ready release because right now it's mostly just a lot of, you know, bug fixes and getting better error reporting and, um, you know, again, updating the documentation and sample projects and things of that nature. So anyways, that's going to wrap up today's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Don't forget to sign up for the VR Hackathon. I'll see you at GDC and I'll see you in the next video.